What is going on, guys? So, I just got back from school like 10 minutes ago. I'm all, and I'm already making a video. I'm hyped up. And uh, so today we're going to be watching. Yeah, that's what we're going to be watching. No, today we're going to be watching Cinema Sins. Everything right, wrong with Finding Dory. I actually really like Finding Dory, but let's see what's wrong with it. This. Part two will be on my other channel. Isn't it about time or these assholes channel. merge these two logos into one and spare us the forty-five seconds it takes to suck their own? <laughs> c it's true. You can't lie. My the part two, I will be uploading right after this one. Hot cake, kilt cake, fish hugging. Jesus, another fish has gone missing. This makes me feel like the NSA dude at the end of Hunt for Red October. You've lost another submarine. Hi, I'm Dory. Can you please help me? Finding Nemo opened with a gut-punching emotional scene of loss of life setting the urgency tone early. This movie opens with a scene of a forgetful child, then cuts straight to her being alone. The movie could have done itself tons of favors by showing us the actual moment Dory lost track of her family, but instead we just glossed that over. She could come from anywhere. Wow, you are. You are no help today. The movie gets terrific comic actors Bill Hader and Kate McKinnon to voice fish, but then gives them nothing else to do in the whole movie, which is a waste. This sin is for the fact that her blindly trusting ass hasn't been gobbled whole by a bigger fish yet. The idea that fish come up to the surface to stare at the stars, that's actually laughably stupid, but whatever. Good Milky Way shot, Pixar. You're perfect. Hi, I'm Dory. Was it something I said? No, it was you popping out of nowhere suddenly, thereby scaring them. Are you stupid in addition to having memory issues? Oh, my boat! It took my son! Finding Nemo Origins. A whole year? Making it a whole year is going to make it very hard for me to swallow that Dory will be successful in finding her parents. Also, you're telling me that after the original Finding Nemo adventures, she's managed to stick around, but then a whole year after that, she's going to wander off. Dang, seriously? I thought there were three sharks. No, no, there were definitely four. But last time you told it there were three. The movie decides Marlin is a compulsive liar, which was not a trait he displayed prior to this movie, but whatever. Sequels gotta find humor where they can. We almost missed the field trip! Even though Dory got you up early. Where are we going? I thought you told her. I didn't tell her. Yeah, Marlin, but why did you bring her here if you told her she couldn't go on the field trip anyway? And hasn't Nemo been through enough sh that you could have made? Literally almost half of the sh this stuff is true. Can't lie. This trip on his own? I mean, it's one f***ing year later. Wow, well, I am so honored. I have never been a teaching assistant before. Mr. Ray! You got help. Marlin, who has absolutely nothing to do, gives up on trying to tell Dory she can't go on this field trip after one misunderstanding. But I guess he's busy and all, what with all the many anemone amenities back at home. You see, kids, when two fish love each other. And we'll stop right there. Apparently Dory, who was never taught about reproduction, knows about reproduction. And also, the act of egg fertilization is given the same Puritan embarrassment as human reproduction. Even though these kids are a year older and should already know this I remembered something! Luckily, this class Mr. Ray taught today contained exactly the sort of clues Dory needed to kickstart her journey. And she doesn't forget them within seconds, making her memory in this movie super convenient. But something important? What? How the f*** is Marlin here right now? Did he get a premonition about checking on Mr. Ray's field trip and somehow find all these assholes who then somehow found Dory even though she was carried into the undertow in a mass of stingrays? Somewhere out there is my family. It's a massively ginormous ocean, though. Do you really think you can strike finding a missing fish gold twice? Also, it takes nearly one third of this Finding Dory movie for Dory to even go looking for herself. You can get us all the way across the ocean, right? No, but I know a guy. Good thing it's been a whole year and these turtles are migrating again, huh? Also, as happy as I am to see Dude Crush again, he rides the East Australian Current and shouldn't have any f***ing knowledge or ability to get these fish to California. Sea turtles are not an entire globe inhabiting species. The sequel to Finding Nemo perpetuates the myth of clownfish being able to hold on to turtle shells during this speedy tubular journey. Donut, feed in the fishes! Squirt hasn't aged a day in the last year. I'm concerned about his growth and lack of nutrition. Dory somehow doesn't see or doesn't react to this scary giant-ass eyeball that appears right in her field of view while Marlin is talking. Once again, Predator decides to announce itself instead of just killing these fish right now. Have you ever seen that show, Animal Ninja Warriors? Yeah, those f***ers don't announce their presence. They just suddenly snap, and they're dead. 20,000 leagues under the entertainment value. Also, fortunately for the scene setting, an entire cargo ship and all its containers sunk here. And all those containers have stayed stacked on the ship despite the 45 degree angle. Nemo! This is why you don't bring your child on intercontinental ocean adventures. <laughs> Physics, ex machina. You can go wait over there. Go wait over there and forget. It's what you do best. This is super mean for a fish that's lived near her and called her friend, and tolerated her forgetfulness for an entire year. And now, of course, she's going to get just far enough to get separated from them to cause further calamity. All because Marlin was an uncharacteristic dick. I'm Sigourney Weaver. that. Why is audio intended for human guests of the park so audible from outside and underwater, other than to advance the plot? I mean, sh 
Do they actually have speakers underwater so all the fish can hear this too? <laughs> we believe in rescue, rehabilitation, and release. Except all the fish who can help Dory find her parents. They aren't really skip. That would be silly. And why would a marine life institute in California have a picture on the wall of the Australian dentist's niece from the first movie? And how f***ing old is that Apple IIe computer back there? <laughs> I can camouflage, but that's very different from complete invisibility. There wasn't even a telltale lump here. <coughs> this octopus can also camouflage his 3D body into something 2D. If I just take your tag, I can take your place on the transport truck. How the hell does he think he's getting this tag off? This is one of those super impossible cable ties. Now, maybe it's because he's an octopus. He doesn't know that. But he does know something about Cleveland and understands human speech. So you can forgive us for being assholes about that. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It's kind of a drag. She has to keep saying this over and over because it makes the movie kind of boring. We're supposed to be releasing the octopus back to the ocean today. Amazing this octopus was planning his prison break on the very day Dory got captured. And these two could start some sort of symbiotic relationship. How does Hank look green when his camouflage takes the color of his surroundings? There's no green here except for on the map. And it's not in range. By the way, nice job making the octopus basically Randall from Monsters Inc. Hey, look, shells. <gasps> I love shells. <laughs> Jesus, this movie is like Memento and Cross with Slumdog Millionaire. Dory's memory is inconvenient until the world, which is conducting some sort of parental scavenger hunt, provides perfect clues at the perfect time. Base, this is Carol. Uh, I think I might have found that missing octopus. Over. What a liar. When did you ever see the octopus during this walk down the stairs? Yeah, you might have stepped on octopus goop, but you didn't get visual confirmation, so stop lying, you lying liar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Destiny. Oh, Destiny. Destiny is not only the name of a whale Dory knows, but the mantra by which the screenplay was written. Dory knocks over the coffee pot without breaking it or making a noise, and absolutely nobody will wonder why a f***ing coffee pot is suddenly here. <laughs> This employee can't hear Hank's grunts and loud-ass monkey barring. Also, this octopus is so James Bond, I'm wondering how he hasn't broken out of this place on his own yet, or found and put himself in whatever tank he's trying to get to. And then this person absentmindedly throws a regal blue tank out into the whale shark tank. I mean, people look at things, right? We're our friends! We talked through the pipes when we were little! Because Aquarium Rehab places like this always have pipes connecting each exhibit. So he's the only one through the day. Of course. Also, no, he didn't want to pipe down. He didn't want to work. He didn't do enough. George's little voice couldn't carry that far. Or even help more than he or who. Much less few pipe pals with a f***ing whale shark. Brian! Lower the volume! Now! Hmm, a fish with a memory problem, a shark with an eyesight problem, Nemo's weak fin. It's almost as if these movies think disabilities are easy joke fodder. For real! There's no other way. There's no other way. <gasps> There's no other way. And now this movie is getting f***ing ridiculous. Like, Dory spent a whole year not hearing anything that reminded her of her parents. But now she's hit a virtual treasure trove of memory joggers in one day. And maybe the movie is saying her memory is simply just getting better, but it's still a ridiculous amount of reminders in a short amount of time. What are you even doing? We're calling it over, of course. In the animal kingdom, the pronoun game is a huge problem. Even worse than poaching or overfishing. Becky keeps humorously pecking Marley, but isn't this beak a beak? Like, tear fish and other small prey apart kind of beak? All you have to do is imprint with a mate. Oh man, they drank Twilight Breaking Dawn too into this, didn't they? How exactly is Becky supposed to carry us? Yo! Man, how many lost fish have broken their way into quarantine using Becky in a sand pail? These sea lions make it sound like all the time. Hey, movie, how did these two get out of the tank and across the massive human walkway to hide in the stroller? I know you glossed over it, but I cannot. Still not clear. These assholes watching two amazingly large sea creatures are not in any way dumbfounded at this kind of behavior right now. Just the beluga's posture alone, with its fin in the air, would make me want to call the park authorities. Mad on the loose baby stroller, driving through families and other moms, but nobody gives a f Wait, the world's most powerful pair. I know that. Why do I know that? No idea, since you were just a little baby when you left, and I can't think of one reason why you'd ever see that sign while in captivity. This feels sort of like the traffic cone thing in Toy Story 2, where miraculously no one is observant, and no one even as much as walks by this tree with a pail of fish in it. Tree Lim has unreal catapulting powers and insane accuracy by throwing Marlin and Nemo into a fish tank that would definitely be sitting around outside a gift shop, but thank goodness they landed in water, am I right? What are the odds of that, by the way? I believe my disbelief has served its proper suspension when it comes to this octopus-driven stroller that no one in this entire building notices, and is now on full alert full status. <laughs> Lucky Uncle of luckiness. That's it! You have wasted my time! Wait, no! That transport truck leaves at dawn, and I'm not missing it, so Wait. give me your tag! I honestly can't argue with a single thing this guy can do. <laughs> For real! Like this, be put in the children's touch pool. You want to get
get sued? Because this is how you get sued. She remembers the Just Keep Swimming song from her childhood and decides that is advice for her current situation. And despite all logic, it apparently is. You made her feel like she couldn't do it. Didn't we cover this in the first movie? 